welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna to be unboxing a maker crate and it's so exciting. I love getting the maker crate. So if you are new to my channel, I created this channel as a homeschooling resource to do unboxings, which is what we're doing today to give you curriculum ideas, organizational ideas, and ways to invite Christ into your homeschool space. So if you're interested in those things, please hit that subscribe button and let's open this crate. Okay, so this month's maker crate is embroidered aprons. So that just sounds super fun. I haven't done a whole lot of embroidery stuff. I've done some, but not a whole lot. It says learn elegant embroidery techniques, then embellish and an apron and patches. There you go. That sounds cool. This box is really light. <laughs> Some of the boxes, if they have like clay or that kind of stuff in them, are super heavy, but this month, this one's pretty light. So let's flip this around and not whack the camera off the table. <laughs> so that's what it could look like if you wanted to do that pattern. So that looks super cute. I'm excited to make an apron. When I, I went to culinary school for just a little bit, when I was in high school and I loved wearing aprons at that time, but then I could never find ones exactly like the ones I wore I kept in culinary school and where I could tie them around my waist several times and then have like a dish towel off the side. And so then I just never wear aprons anymore. <laughs> it just ruined me. I don't know. <laughs> it's a poor excuse, but so these are just kind of an inspiration, a short inspiration book. It has like a little stitch guide, has some different pictures on here. And then the instructions come from down here, so you can even either scan it or go to the website to find the instructions, and they're usually very, very good instructions, but there's some different ideas in here. And then in this crate, we have two different sizes of, do you call these looms? I use these all the time for cross stitch. When I was younger, I loved to cross stitch, but I'm like, what do you even call them? Do you call them a loom? Sorry if my door keeps rattling. My kids are playing outside a lot, so every time they open the front door, this door makes noise. And then we have some stencil uh, patterns, I guess, but then there's carbon paper back here. So I'm not sure if these are designs you can use the carbon paper and put them on the apron. And then we have some really thick, like felt pieces. So I don't know if we're using those to practice uh, or maybe so we don't stab ourselves. <laughs> I'm not really sure. And then we have a whole bunch of just pieces of fabric. It talked about patches, I think, or something that is part of the project. So I'm guessing that's what these are for. We have like this mustard yellow color and then this, I don't know, it's purple, but like a deadened purple. <laughs> and then this is the stitch guide. So I wonder if this is for practicing. So you have back stitch, split stitch, chain stitch, French knot, which so I know how to do most of these stitches up here. <laughs> French knot was always a struggle. I remember my mom trying to teach me one time, satin stitch and lazy daisy. So those all sound like it'll be, it'll be a fun learning experience. And then here is the apron somehow. <laughs> it's here. And then it's very like silky fabric. So these are more like a thick cotton fill, but this is very like silky filling. And then it has, you know, the pockets right here. So that's super cute and I'm excited to, to decorate it. And then we also have some embroidery tools. So I don't know what's in here. You know, me and trying to get these boxes open is always, is always an adventure. So we have some needles and then we have thread. So we have needles, thread. We have, I don't know, is this a magnet or something? Maybe it's just keeping these. There's like little pin, the little, Pin. What are these even called? <laughs> I don't know. My vocabulary is doing so well today. Like you would put a little brooch on your shirt. That's what these are. They're like a safety pin, but not exactly. And then we also have, I think these are scissors. Oh, whoa. These are pretty cool. Whoa. They sound pretty intense. I don't think I've ever used these scissors. I used to have my cute little ones that folded up so that they'd fit with all my embroidery thread when I, we'd like travel and stuff and I could still cross stitch. And so I love those things. I thought they were so cool. But then we have, this is embroidery thread. So there's some thread in there. So I don't know what all that thread is used for versus this thread, but there's a bunch, if you could see a bunch of embroidery thread in there. And so that'll be a lot of fun. I also still, I have tons of embroidery thread because I use it for various projects occasionally. Well, and then this I think is a magnet, probably for pins or something. I'm guessing that's what this is. You know, like when you don't want them to go everywhere. That's what it seems like it is. Let's see if, cause these are, yeah. So it's a magnet. 
and not a super strong one. So I don't know what they're gonna suggest for that. But that's what's in this crate. And I'm just, I'm excited to try some of these different stitches. I really enjoy sewing stuff because it's something I can just sit and listen to a show and just sew. And I just think it's super fun to do. It gives me something to do. So I am gonna get at this project and I will let you know how it goes. and it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of projects you could keep doing, so I haven't done all those things, but I've done quite a few, and so I wanted to show you what I already did. So I started off with doing this little stitch guide here. So this is the only thing I used the biggest loom on was this one, and you could iron it or something if you wanted to keep it and have it look nice. So I practiced these stitches. Before I thought I knew most of these stitches, I do know back stitch, but a split stitch I did not know and a chain stitch I hadn't done before either. And then the French knots were way easier than I thought they were gonna be. <laughs> so that was good. I think the video just made it very easy to follow and so you just make them gradually bigger. And then the satin stitch I've done before and the lazy daisy I had not. So that one was fun to learn as well. And I feel like the videos were pretty clear on what you were supposed to do. The only one was the split stitch. So they do one type of way. And then I looked it up on like YouTube, on YouTube, <laughs> and I found a different way that I actually like better. So I tried that. So there's a few different options, right? The way they do it might not be the way you do it or the way you've learned to do it or the way that's easiest for you. But I thought this was very helpful to go through and just practice some different stitches. And then the next thing you had to do was plan what you wanted to put on your apron. So. This is my least favorite part of all these projects. I am really good at copying people. I'm not really good at coming up with my own thing. So the example they gave, use this. I'll just hold it up because that'll make more sense. So this leaf design, and then a lot of them, they put like your initial in it, just like of your first name or whatever. So that's what I did. And I actually found this J just on like some clip art online and just printed it out and I traced it. And it was, it was pretty dark outside when I was doing this. So my kids have those light up boards. They got them for Christmas. And so I just used those to trace it. So it was a little bit easier for me to see what I was doing. I tried a couple different J's. I don't know if you can see, I've erased several behind it just because I couldn't find the one I liked the most. And so then I like this. So I copied it onto here and I really liked how it turned out. I picked colors that kind of matched in with the, the apron. There's a ton of vibrant colors in there, but that's not really my whole thing, my vibe. I don't really like that. So I picked these colors and did the flower, the flowers, these are leaves. Did the leaves, did the J, and then went around. So this is the satin stitch, but I back stitched around the, the leaves. I wanna keep calling them flowers. And then this is the split stitch all the way around the circle. And then the satin stitch again, on the J. And so I think it turned out really cute. And this apron I feel like could you could use it for cooking and in the kitchen, but if you're into art kind of stuff or you know any sort of crafting, I feel like this would be a good apron to use too. I feel like the pockets would be really good. I'm not a painter, but if you were a painter to stick, you know, your brushes in or whatever you're using, just kind of put it in there. I, it kind of reminds me more of some of those kind, like the crafting aprons I've seen than ones in the kitchen, but you could still use it in the kitchen. So I really like how that turned out. And then the last thing they have you do is to make some patches 
which I'm not sure if I'll really use this. Again, <laughs> this isn't really my thing, but maybe if you were like a high schooler doing this, maybe it is a high school thing. I'm not really sure, but I'll show you what I did. And then I'm also working on another one. So it gives you this page right here that has a whole bunch of different shapes outlined. And then it has, you know, it has a double outline because you're gonna use that when you make your patch. So I copied theirs. They had a one with a sun on it. So I did that first. So this is the one with the sun right here. And then you use this really thick felt over here. Let me see if I can grab it without dropping stuff. So you use this thick felt for the back of it. So you'll stitch the front of it first and then you cut it out and cut out some of this felt and then you're gonna um, whip stitch. I'm like, what is this called? I know what this is called. I've whip stitched plenty of times before. So you whip stitch around, which actually takes quite a while. I feel like this stitching part doesn't take as long, but whip stitching all the way around does take a while. So that was the first one I did. And then I was like, what else could I do? I was like, well, if I was gonna put it on my apron, cause that's one of the suggestions, you can put them on your apron. It was like, maybe I could just do my kids initials. <laughs> so I started with two of my kids. My other two both start with M. <laughs> so I don't know if I'll keep doing those ones and maybe just do one M. I need to like look up a pattern. These ones I just freestyled it, but I don't think I can freestyle an M very well. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see what we decide to do. So I did L for Lydia, A for Alana. So Lydia's is the one that I have finished. So I'm gonna show you that one. So I did it like this. I like the white against the blue. And again, if I did put it on the apron, I felt like it matched the color pretty well. And then I did purple little knots on it. They had a light color purple and a dark color purple because she loves purple. So <laughs> I did that for her. And then my other daughters, I have traced it, but I haven't cut it out or done any of the stitching on it or anything like that. So that's what it looks like there. And then you can either directly stitch it onto the apron or a backpack or you know whatever you want to put it on or they have these little pins that you can stitch to the back and you can use those instead so i put one on here just so you can kind of see how it works so that's that one so i had the other ones to finish but it was like ending the it was the end of the month it's the last day of the month today <laughs> so i was like i just have to show them what i've done because it's taken me a while to get through all these things but there's still a ton of embroidery thread left. And this is good to use just for other projects as well, even if you don't use it all for the embroidery stuff. And then the scissors were really good quality. Do not cut your fingers off with these. They're just, uh, they're not so great for trimming or cutting these kinds of things out because they just do a very short motion instead of a longer motion like you'd get from regular scissors, but they were great for cutting thread. So. Those were kind of my thoughts about this activity. Again, this is something I enjoy doing more. I loved sewing or love having a project. I can just kind of sit down and do while I'm listening to something or watching a movie and just kind of relax. So I thought this was a lot of fun and I'm really excited to see what next month brings. So if you enjoy seeing these videos, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you next time.